son, thank you. When I ponder that IEEE's 250,000 members exceed one-third the total populations of the commonwealths of Massachusetts and Pennsylvania at the time of the signing of our blessed Declaration of Independence, I cannot fail to be awed by the fecundity and fertility of electrical engineers. As for my humble tributes to your 100th birthday, I offer my kite, which first identified lightning with electricity, my Leyden jar and battery investigations confirming the existence of positive and negative electricity. And as for my lightning rod, I wrote, it has pleased God in his goodness to mankind at length to discover to them the means of securing their habitations and other buildings from mischief by thunder and lightning. An inveterate scribbler, I recorded all this in my experiments and observations on electricity written by candlelight, which subsequently impelled me to invent the bifocal spectacles <laughs> precisely two centuries ago this year. But enough. As your oldest ghostly guest, it is my temporary, temporal mission to conjure up a mural of electrical pioneers and peers. But ere I summon forth the first of these scientific shades, I quote my axiom on your element. If no further use of electricity is discovered, this, however, is something considerable that it will help to make a vain man humble. Your obedient servant, Benjamin Franklin. <laughs> Though Britain's Michael Faraday was born a year after I expired, he is, in matters electrical, my esteemed colleague. As your institute embarks on its second century, my modest contributions to our profession are offered as tokens of respect. A lifetime spent in experiments on the condensation of gases, induced electricity, the electronic state of matter, hydroelectricity, the laws for electrolysis, and the relationship of electric and magnetic forces. To all this and more, I was galvanized by Christian faith, a salient element in all experimentation, which guided me in the fabrication of the first crude dynamo, uh, a copper disk rotated between the poles of a permanent magnet. Oh, a simple machine. But I trust a worthwhile legacy is the precursor of electric dynamos, generators, and a host of electrical industrial appliances, which you, my descendant colleagues, have so perfected and extended to benefit humanity far beyond my hopes and expectations. For while I may have established a foundation, it is you, individually and collectively, who have erected the temples of enlightened technology that nourish the enterprise of all mankind. Your humble chronicler is honored to introduce two titans of electrical engineering Thomas Alva Edison, and Alexander Graham Bell. Gentlemen, I commend you to your colleagues. I'm pleased to share this platform with the former president of IEEE's forerunner, the American Institute of Electrical Engineers, and delighted that my colleagues awarded you the Edison Medal. <laughs> you know, somehow I never got one. <laughs> <laughs> As for that telephone of yours, I understand that now there's over 150 million of them in the U.S. alone, and we can almost instantly talk to every nation on Earth. Though your Watson come here, I want you, the first spoken sentence ever transmitted certainly was historic. I most respect the billions of hellos you made possible, which have bound the world together more effectively than a gross of government a bushel of international treaties. I'm most grateful for your praises, Tom. But compared to your inventory of inventions and unprecedented 1,097 patents, 
My speaking machine was a modest, though useful, accomplishment. I could continue, but were I to fully catalog your achievements, we'd be obligated to serve our guests breakfast. They're electrical engineers. They don't require any sleep. Oh. <laughs> Dear respected friend, I have a bone to pick with you. You neglected to mention my proudest achievement. Just 100 years ago, I had the blessed wits to sign the founding charter of the great institute we celebrate tonight. The world and I are both indebted to two brilliant associates, Nikola Tesla and Charles Proteus Steinmetz. Ah, my dear Carl, this is a great occasion. Not only for us a reunion, but the IEEE Centennial. And also exactly 100 years ago, I first saw the New York skyline and came to our America. Yeah, and I arrived four years later to this land of opportunity. But had a penny in my pocket and not a word of English. Ah, but now you see our expression, wunderbar. <laughs> well, we both worked with Herr Edison in New Jersey and by General Electric and met Herr Westinghouse. And you gave America and the world the first breaker of Holen, or what they call telephone repeater. Your Tesla alternating current induction motor, which revolutionized power transmission. The polyphase generator and transformer. Das oscillation transformer. Das revolving felt generator. Split phase motor. Your Tesla high frequency machines and coils. Your Tesla tubes and lamps. And you even tried to transmit energy without buyers. <laughs> Did you deserve the Edison Medallia? And now you are in a U.S. postage stamp. <laughs> but you, Father, you're the true papa of the perfected electric motor, oh. the light-producing generator. It was you who discovered the law of magnetic hysteresis, the formula for calculating alternating currents. It was you whose theories and experiments on electrical discharges, waves and impulses, the phenomena of lighting, illuminated and inspired generations of engineer inventors. Why, you even perfected the electric streetcar. And always you found time to educate and encourage your young colleagues. Uh, yeah, well, uh, as you can see, Nicky, I had plenty of time for work. I, I wasn't exactly the type to be a social schmetterling, a, a butterfly of English. Not social, but a socialist I was. And for 11 years, President Bonders connected the Board of Education. Some called me a radical. But in a way, all engineers with new ideas are radicals. By me, it's a compliment. But even Harvard awarded me an honorary degree. And I was also elected president of the American Institute for Electrician Engineers. I remember. I voted for you. Ah, uh, and for them you wrote the Electrical Engineer's Code of Ethics. Your middle name was certainly well chosen. Like the Greek god Proteus, you foretold our future. Yeah, that code was the best work I ever did. Ethics, the highest moral and professional standards. That is the only way to engineer the future. It isn't just a search for new machinery. Remember, lieber Kameraden, that technology without humanity is near hardware. Hardware is unser responsibility to all we serve. Yet I only want to say, Freulichen hundred Jahre Geburtstag, und leben Sie long and wohl, I triple E. Oh, we talk too much. Pardon. And now, Peter Zane. Marconi's gamut of inventions include the magnetic detector, the horizontal directional aerial, a tuning device, the time spark system for generating continuous waves, and the first shortwave beam transmissions resulting in an array of lucrative international patents in virtually every industrial nation except his native Italy and leading to worldwide affiliations, including the formation of RCA, which acquired all of Marconi's U.S. business assets of at least equal import 
certainly to me, Marconi fathered a charming, wise, and accomplished daughter who honors us with her gracious presence this evening. Joya Marconi Braga. <laughs> Joya Marconi Braga is also celebrating a significant occasion this year the 10th anniversary of her establishing the Marconi International Fellowship, which she founded to commemorate the 1974 centenary of her omniferous papa's birth. Our compliments and affection are again in order. Bravo! <laughs> yes, right, I'll get Examination of my eternal almanac, 1903 edition, reveals two seminal events of special interest to engineers, both heralded a new age. That year, Wilbur and Orville flew their kite-like airplane, 59 seconds. Just 11 days later, Johann von Neumann was born in Budapest. The world has not been the same since. The accomplishments of this mathematical wizard so far outweigh my paltry powers of elucidation that I have prevailed upon this heavenly Hungarian to materialize and address this centennial assemblage in person. Fellow electrical engineers, ladies and gentlemen, I am both honored and pleased to share with you the presence of Dr. Johann von Neumann. Welcome. Dr. Franklin, distinguished colleagues, you place me in an embarrassing position. To talk about myself, I am loath to do, but I will confess to two great loves. America and mathematics. As a youngster, I blush to report I was something of an obnoxious prodigy. My teachers considered their conventional instruction a waste of time. And by age 19, as a professional mathematician, I published my first papers before graduating from the University of Budapest. Because I am a Jew, and the scourge of anti-Semitism was infecting Central Europe, and especially because America offered intellectual freedom. <laughs> but you know all about that. You helped invent it. I came here in 1930. Uh, and in 1933, when Hitler became Chancellor of Nazi Germany, you were invited to join Princeton's Institute for Advanced Study as its youngest permanent member. And so was Einstein. Yeah, we were grateful refugees. And when America was attacked by the totalitarian axis, we were eager to serve our beloved adapted country. At Los Alamos, I was consultant for the construction of the atomic bomb. And later as a member of the AEC, my quantum theory was useful in developing the world's first hydrogen bomb. These terrible weapons are both a threshold and a threat, but they are alas necessary. For me, the defense of democracy justifies all risks. I suppose I am considered the father of what is now called high-tech. Already I am told that more than half of America's workforce is engaged in processing information instead of manufacturing. But you know those quantum chumps. It's only the beginning. By the time IEEE celebrates its bicentennial in 2084, every fact ever known to man and every likelihood will, through your efforts, be instantly available. That is the promise of quantum mathematics, the computer age, and my devout hope. Dear Dr. Van Neumann, you have transformed technology and society. That's the endeavor of all electrical and electronic engineers. <laughs> Thank you. It grows late. And I have pontificated for a considerable period. And your waning patience with me may be aptly expressed by my own aphorism. Guests and fish stink after three days. <laughs> and now 
I again summon forth the heritage of heroes who have sired our profession. Michael Faraday, Thomas Alva Edison, Alexander Graham Bell, Nikola Tesla, Charles Proteus Steinmetz, Johann von Neumann. Treasure your students. They are our extensions into time. Remember, there's always a better way to do it. The challenge is to find it. Temper technology with compassion. No life is pleasing to God that is not useful to man. Though I died penniless, I was enriched by American liberty. Honor your country and your institution. That's the most powerful machine is morality. The most perfect engine is ethics. They need no patent. They never fail. They always work. Remember that integrity is the most important invention. Never lose your sense of wonder or your sense of play. Those two qualities enrich the bright future of electrical engineering. Our greatest need and what you symbolize is a declaration of interdependence. You are one day into your second century. The festivities are over. Let us clear the hall and get to work. There's so much to be done. But take heart. All will be well. We'll reconvene a century hence.